great athletes in front of you and what they've done this season and how excited are you for I'm just, I just am thrilled that I did such a great job with them. Uh, <laughs> no, they've had a great year. Uh, I have two very, or two, three very competitive uh, women that lo love to compete. Um, they handle sarcasm well, which works really well with me. Um, and uh, yeah, they love to compete. And, and at practice, if you went and observed a practice, you would wonder, are they getting anything done because there's music going, uh, a lot of banter back and forth. Uh, but when it's, when it's their time to get in the circle and do what they need to do, they can focus uh, immediately and get things done and uh, have, have quality uh, throwing sessions. So, um, But if you went and observed, you say, are these guys getting anything done today? But you know, every day they put the work in and they, they're able to focus right away. And, and in uh, big competitions, you can just tell they love to compete. Um, most of the time, they're coachable and focused. Um, so that's still a work in progress with, with all of them. But uh, yeah, it's just been a lot of fun to work with. What's to say about the program um, right now? Uh, we're in a good place. <clears throat> I feel fortunate we, we got a, two transfer athletes. And then Gabby's been here for, I think, about 10 years now. Um, you know, working through some injuries and stuff and being a, a dual sport athlete when she came in. Uh, and then she finally wised up and, and uh, concentrated on track. And then once we got the injuries taken care of, I mean, she just gets better and better as we go. Um, finally understand some concepts and can, can physically do the things we're, we're asking her to do. So, uh, and then Maya, you know, she finally wised up and, and came to Colorado State. I was, I was a, her second choice and, uh, Got to give her some grief. Um, no, but it's, you know, a lot of it is just the buy-in from the athletes. And uh, they're 100% committed to what we're doing. And uh, that makes it easy for me as a coach. Um, what makes Maya so special? Well, she's very funny. Um, no, she's just a competitor. It, what's, what's the big difference this year, I think her first year, when she was here, she wasn't herself. I think she was trying to figure out how she fit in and and uh, was really quiet, which is amazing to me now because she's not now. Um, but just kind of figure out her role um, in the team and, and her personality and to see her get more comfortable in her second year with us and let her personality come out and our connections gotten better uh, and just a great sense of humor, which I work really well with that. But to see her become you know, just more comfortable in her role. And for her to maybe handle, you know, everyone talks about um, her dad and everything, but the way she's handled her career and her successes, what, what does that say about her? Well, I think she's more com confident in just being herself, and, and uh, um, we kind of stifle the dad talk. Uh, she needs to be her own person, and, and we need to give her the credit. And um, if anything, I, I, I tease her about Brock a little bit, but. Uh, uh, for the most part, we, we try to focus on Maya and what she's doing. The uh, bar's been set pretty high here for these athletes. What's it going to take for them to get to the next level uh, in what hopefully is the Olympics? Well, they're competing at a level that I think puts them in a position to qualify for the team, which is really exciting and kind of rare to be in this position where we have three athletes that if they compete up to their full potential, I think they have a shot of making the team. Um, so. I mean, just going in, you know, with the competitions they've had and competing as well as they've ha they have, uh, I think it puts them in a position to, to make a team if they have a big day. So, and that's pretty rare. I mean, there's a difference between going to going to trials and just being thankful you're there and 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 then actually having a shot is uh, is exciting. You look back this time last year. Are you surprised at all about the growth that they've had? Yeah, I mean. Um, huge improvement on all three of them. Um, Michaela really attacking, attacking some mental um, challenges she had with competition and, and becoming more focused, able to manage cues, technical cues much better. Uh, she really had to take a, uh, a hard look at improving some of those areas, both in, in training and in competition, and she's done that. Gabby continuing to work on some uh, you know, some physical issues with some injuries and stuff and getting healthy and really uh, 
taken a huge role in that herself. And then being able to understand some technical cueing even better. Uh, so she's at her best technically. And then my combination of um, being a better competitor and then her and I, I think, getting on the same page with technique and finding some things that work for her uh, has really got us to this point, I think. Life's a bit simpler for these guys. I mean, because we, we've gotten through finals week and gotten through the conference meet and everything, and so they're not going to school. Um, so recovery's better, I think, for, for them. Uh, I'm assuming they're being smart with their sleep and, and uh, eating well and everything. But it's just, I think life's a little less complicated right now than it was when they were in school. And, uh, you know, we've, we've got uh, a couple, we have a couple training weeks before uh, the trial, so they, uh, we're able to just kind of settle into what we're doing. And really, the biggest thing is to have quality uh, quality practices, uh, not a ton of volume at this point, but more competitive type throws and uh, the haze in the barn at this point. So um, just refining some technique and, and uh, have a great competitive uh, attitude at practice and then shut it down. Yeah, I, I think there's less of that, and this is more in, encouragement with teammates. Uh, I, I don't see a whole lot of competition between, because a lot of times they're on different practice agendas anyway. So, uh, and Maya, f for the most part, most of the season was practicing in the morning, and Gabby's in the afternoon. So it's more just encouragement from the teammates and, and less head-to-head um, -head competition at practice. We don't really do that a whole lot. Uh, no, I've been to a lot of big meets, um, so my, my biggest deal is to uh, not overcoach them as a coach, because um, I get excited too, and you, you start tinkering too much, and my biggest fault is I overcoach, so I want to keep things simple, stick with our cues that work. Uh, sometimes it's difficult, depending on where they put us as coaches, to, to get a real good look at what they're doing, so technically it's, it's difficult when I'm... Um, try to video and get quality video and see what they're doing. So it's just sticking with the, the cues that have worked, um, help them with their mindset a little bit. And if, if uh, things start going a little bit sideways to intervene there and, and help you know, keep them calm and everything. The worst thing I can do is overcoach and be super nervous. So um, I, I need to, I've been doing this long enough, I think I can hopefully stay under control. I'll go first. Um, we're super excited. I think all of us are. We're pretty high energy to begin with, so I think um, for all of us to uh, always train together and live together and be around each other all the time, I think this is an, an incredible experience for all three of us, and we're just super excited. Yeah, I think we've all had unique and different but very long careers in our own ways. Um, and to get here and then to be able to do it, not just like achieve some of your goals and, and live the dream of going to the trials and stuff, but to do it with some of your best friends um, is like a truly special and, and yeah, unique experience. I think they summed it up pretty well. I'm feeling pretty excited and I think we're also pretty grateful just to be here and have had the season that we've had. Um, Yeah. Well, I think like Bernard said, um, last year I didn't really know what my place was on this team. And coming in as a transfer, I think that isn't easy already. And so I kind of just needed to figure out like what each of their personalities was and how I was going to fit into that. But honestly, it's been great. Um, like I said, we're all high energy. We all like to have fun. And honestly, I think like what's gotten us here is that we also don't like to always talk or think about track. Like, we have lives outside of track. And I think that's why, like, as long as this season has been, I think we're, like, all mentally in a good spot. 
um, just because, like yesterday, we went out and had lunch, and we didn't talk about track at all, honestly. And I think, like, it was so fun and fresh, and, like, that's what I think keeps us fresh for practice and going into this 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 big meet, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we really can't say on, on live television, but... <laughs> A lot. I don't know. Just <laughs> I don't know. It, it's really fun. I would say we're all high energy, and I would describe us, and I think other people would describe us as all having very big personalities, which makes it chaotic in the best way. Um, so our conversations never stay on the same topic for very long. Yeah, it's a lot of making fun of each other and just going back and forth between yeah. who we make fun of. So. Knowing their vulnerabilities and kind of getting at it for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's kind of a fine line here, though, with sisterhood and brotherhood and sharing. Oh, yeah. yeah. You guys all have that pretty thick skin. Yeah. yeah. I would I say. I mean, we all come from, honestly, pretty big families. Yeah. And, yeah. like, I have brothers. She has brothers. She's got both. But, honestly, like, I think that has a big. And our, our parents, too. Like, we ha just come from. Even when we go to meets, like other parents will make fun of us because we kind of understand like yeah. the dynamic and they fit right in and like as soon as one parent you know if they're out of meat they'll come pick us up to take us to dinner or something and then they would hop right in and make fun of the three of us too so it's, yeah I would say lines have been crossed and we've been figuring out where those lines are and sometimes, that's kind of that's the fun of yeah, it sometimes the word will get out to their parents and then somehow the parents will walk up to us and be like so we heard this and then I'm like how did that uh. even end up <laughs> Yeah. There and it's yeah. Yeah. Um, some, it's, some line crossing happens. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. all the <laughs> time, sure. all the time. But they have tough skin, so yeah. yeah. Uh, for all three, what was it like growing up watching the Olympics and now having a chance to go? Honestly, like I'd love to say, oh yeah, I've always like you know dreamed of this and like I knew it would happen, but it feels to me very surreal. Like I've dreamed of it, um, especially in the you know more recent years, but it really does feel surreal and I feel very grateful and I'm really excited to, to go and just enjoy the moment and, um, you know, I know what I need to do. I, I don't know if these ladies feel the same, but. Um, I personally thought I was going to do soccer up until like three years ago, so I watched the soccer players mostly at the Olympics, but I still enjoyed like watching them and I did dream of being at that level of athletics and I've just found through the path I've taken that that, you know, that now I'm in track, which is still living the same dream, just a different way. So it's, yeah, it's surreal and it's yeah. really cool. Yeah, I would agree. I think track for me didn't really get serious, serious until like, honestly, my sophomore year of high school. And so I really haven't been doing this long and I honestly, like kind of Michaela, I didn't really watch a lot or really think like, hey, that could be me one day. Um, and then I actually trained with a girl named Meg Ewing who will be there. Um, and she is hoping to for sure make the team. Trained with her and honestly, I was like, wow, this is my inspiration. This is my idol. I want to be like her one day. And that's, I think, what kind of got the gears turning a little bit. But no, I, I feel the same way. Like this is definitely a dream, but I'm ready to tackle it, so. I think it's super cool because all of us, none of us have been like, you know, really serious about track since, you know, they were in grade school. Like Gabby, she played soccer here at Colorado State and like just finally transitioned over to track. I started track my sophomore year and Maya mm -hmm. got serious about track. So all of us are kind of, I mean, yeah, we've been training it for a while, but it's still pretty like late to the game comparatively to a lot of these athletes who are going. So it's kind right. of, I think that's what maybe makes it a little extra surreal, but it makes it super cool. Yeah. And I would say late to the game, yes, but honestly, like for track and field athletes, especially throwers, like it takes years and years and years yeah. to sometimes make yeah. it to the top. So I think for us to be going to this experience like this early on in our careers is like, incredible for yeah, years to come for all of us average age of the of a world championship women's discus or at the last world championships was 29 uh, and so even though i'm like old as you know as i'll get out right for college i'm still five years behind that and like so it's we still have long careers ahead of us yeah. which is cool so it's cool timing yeah mm -hmm. as yeah. young athletes going into that knowing that I think there's something special, kind of like Coach Bedard said, is that there's not, I mean, yes, there's expectations, but on some level, it's like 
you know, people don't really, we're not, we've not been going to professional meets or not been to Olympic stuff before. So there is a cool sense of no pressure, you know, we're just doing what we know to do and no one's got, you know, expectations of us. We have expectations for us and coach does, but that does make it, you know, I think kind of awesome. Yeah, I think it's right in that sweet spot. Um, like coach said, we're not in the, we're just grateful to make it and like be on the bottom kind of tier of the of the flights and stuff. We all have like a solid chance if we perform on the day, um, but there's also no pressure, like Michaela said. So it's it's kind of the perfect sweet spot to be in and just go have fun and try and do what you can and place as high as you can. So. Yeah, I agree. I mean. I also think too, like, yeah, we have a, a really good chance because honestly, anything can happen. Um, but also, like, you got to wait another four years. Then that's also something to think about too. Like, even though we're all young, we don't have a lot of experience. Honestly, we have nothing to lose. And sometimes being an, a so-called underdog, I mean, those people have some of the best days. Totally. Um, because when you're a world champion and you're going into it and you're like, I need to make the team. Sometimes you put so much pressure on yourself that you you go into it honestly not making the team um, so I think you know waiting another four years great like I think all of us that would be our next goal is like we want to make that team but honestly four years is a long time so we have nothing to lose but try and go out and, and make this team yeah Yeah, I think it's been a complete 180 for me. Like, it was tough last year. I went through a lot of challenges. They both know it. Um, Bedard knows it for sure. Um, I had a lot of talks, a lot of, I guess, come to Jesus <laughs> moments. And um, it's it's been incredible. Honestly, I've seen so much growth in myself, and I, it's amazing. I, I see it, and coach sees it, and see my it. teammates see it, and so it's, it's, it's fun. I'm, I'm enjoying what I do. Like, it's, it's not just a nine to five job. I hate it, I wanna quit. It's something so incredible. And honestly, to feel the way I feel and to be an athlete and not have a real nine to five job is incredible too. Like, it's, yeah, I wanna go out and, and have a, a legacy. And like you said, like, it's really not about my dad. He's my one of my biggest supporters, but honestly, at the end of the day, like I am here to make a name for myself. And how good does that feel to realize that aspect of it? So obviously, you love him, you love him being there, but at the same time, like Coach said, you are no person you're trying to make your own story. How good does that come? Yeah, I think it's it's super cool. I think it's um, it's honestly everything I ever wanted. Um, I think I've been in his shadow for so many years, um, which is cool I guess but honestly to me at the end of the day like what I want people to know is he's dad to me I honestly don't look at him as this superstar of a person um, and and I think um, him just being in my corner and now me kind of being in the spotlight and him in, in in my shadow a little bit watching me I think that's super cool yeah yeah, I think sometimes um, me and coach have had to not look into the stands, uh, something I, I've had to work on. So he, I know he's there, I know he's watching, I know he's supporting me, but I try really hard to just focus on myself. Um, yeah. Um, for you guys, have you been here a long time? Or what's this like just knowing that, you know, um, finally at one of the pinnacles of your career at CSU? She's been here longer. I'm also a transfer student. This is my third year here. Um, yeah, this is my sixth year here. Um, so I've been here. Yeah, I've been here a long time. Uh, yeah, it's like I said, it's kind of hard to, to describe because I have had so many big changes and I did come into CSU like I was a soccer player and I thought of myself as a soccer player and to transition and switch over and kind of realize, oh, I okay, I have more potential than I thought in this, this sport, and then to, to fully make the switch when the soccer had a coaching change and that kind of thing. Um, it, uh, it definitely makes it different because it wasn't what I've been dreaming about or what I've been thinking about for years and years and years. I trained for soccer for since I was like five years old, um, and I never really tra took track seriously uh, until like three years ago. So to now 
see that that was, I think it's more validation that that was the right choice for me and this is the right path that I'm on. And, and now, like, as much as I love the girls I played soccer with, like, I have such a unique and amazing relationship with these two girls. And, and I got married last year and she was one of my bridesmaids. And I think if Maya had been here a year before, she probably would have been right there with me. Um, and so, yeah, so just being really lucky to, to be at this point with something that I never thought would take me here. Um, yeah, they always, you know, like on Instagram stuff, they're like, dude, like you're killing it and like crazy. We just always thought of you as our goalie. Like we still miss you as our goalie. But um, yeah, they're all still super supportive of all the track stuff. So it's pretty cool. It feels, it feels good. Um, any sort of success I've had in the past has been like not accidental, but like it's been touch and go. It's been very touchy. And this year it's super cool that I feel like I – Mentally, I can really fully um, say that I was the person behind my success this year, and obviously Coach Bedard, but like it's not accidental. I've been working on being very intentional, so it's super cool to be in my fifth year, in my third year at CSU, and know that no, all the results I see, you know, in front of me are because of direct work that I put in, um, which makes it feel really special. I feel like I can take full credit for it versus before. I've had some you know, some successes, and I'm like, yeah, it's good. But it's kind of been, you know, sometimes it just happens. It just lines up. But, you know, I've been consistent this year. Um, so I feel really good about the results of this year and the work that I've put in and we've put in together. And, yeah. Um, all those well, you guys, you know, all those pairs, that's pretty cool. Uh, on the world's biggest stage, the biggest sport in the world, what would that mean to represent uh, not only yourself, but CSU and kind Holy. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think it'd be amazing, right? Like, uh, I think we've talked about it a little bit. Uh, we're at the point in our season where we have a semi-disadvantage to some of the competitive uh, professional athletes. Um, we did start our season, um, you know, especially with indoor. Like, we started in December. So we've been doing this a really long time. And so I think there's a kind of a beautiful moment where it's like, OK, we're kind of ready to, like, have this be the, the peak of this season and finally like be at the point where we're not waiting for anything else. Um, and so, and then, yeah, and then going and all the work we put into CSU and all the time we've had here with the staff and the training staff and, and everybody here, it's it's super cool to be able to represent them. And then also like CSU, I think we just got ranked as like the top non power five school for track, which is amazing. Um, it reflects really highly on coach Bedard. Um, he, does a great job, and I think to have like come from a school and have three of us coming from the same school that's like not expected to be mm -hmm. at this level, and three of us not only to get to the trials like we said, but to have a good shot um, from a you know dinky Mountain West school mm -hmm. is like is super super special, and it, it'd be just really cool to um, kind of defy expectations for that reason and and represent CSU in those ways. Yeah, I think going off of what Gabby said, like honestly. I think to some degree it is a surprise that, hey, Colorado State has, uh, State has three people going. Like, people I don't expect that. Yeah. No. And honestly, like, I think that's super cool for us to make a statement. Like, you could literally go anywhere as long as you have the right coach and honestly the right relationships. It, honestly, it doesn't even matter, like, hey, my coach has this many stats, uh, yada, 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 whatever. I mean, honestly, it is truthfully – the kind of relationship you have with your coach and honestly the belief that you have in yourself. For sure. And so I think that is why it is super cool that we are, you know, representing Colorado State. Like, hey, you can go anywhere and be something and make a name for yourself. I yeah, I think we would all be totally, totally honored um, and excited to represent CSU, like Gabby said. And, you know, it's I you know, it's it's fun to win, fun to do well, and I feel, you know, it's uh, it's always a good feeling. And sometimes uh, at the same time, I feel really good about, like, doing well for someone else, so, like, doing well for Coach Bedard. I think we all kind of feel the same, like, who's put so much time and energy and, you know, is so committed and so all in. It feels good to do well for yourself, and it feels good to do well for the school and for, for Coach, who's, you know, sacrificed a lot of his time. Like, he... Mm -hmm. You know, there's most of our athletes are done. They, you know, having competed at conference or regionals or some in nationals, and that's generally when he gets a break. But 
he's had to stay, you know, training with us through the summer um, and given up some of his free time. So it would feel really cool on that level as well. And I can joke and say this, but he's been here for like a hundred years. Yeah. So honestly, it's about time that we do something here. That's for right. <laughs> <laughs> Second that. <laughs> Well, well, so we, yeah, bo <laughs> we both kind of follow. This is a story and a half. <laughs> we both follow the same path. So we're both from Minnesota. Yeah. Um, and she's one year younger than me. And so my senior at my senior year in high school, um, I kind of started to hear about this Maya Lesnar girl, and I was like, who is she? And she was, uh, you know, killing it in the shot put and in the discus. And discus was my best event. And so I was like, ha. Ah. You know, who is she? And so we, I ran to her a couple times, um, and we competed against each other. And as I like to joke, beat her in the discus in state. Um, but she, you know, completely obliterated me in the shot. Um, so there's, she didn't really know. You can also, I mean, she didn't really. Well, Michaela, you know, knew me, but she I hate to me. say this, but I did not know Michaela. It still hurts my feelings. <laughs> I had no idea who she was. <laughs> And I just knew that, oh, that was the girl that won the disc, and I was the runner-up. And that's all I knew, yeah. really. And then we went our then, separate ways. Yeah. She went to North Dakota State, and I went to Arizona State. And, and honestly, yeah. so we were there. We didn't like, really follow up. I mean, we didn't, we didn't follow each at other. At all, whatever. And then my coach left and took a different job. Um, so I took it as a time to reevaluate where I wanted to be in life and in throwing. And um, loved, loved my old coach and everything and decided though that this um, Colorado State with Coach Bedard would be the best fit. So I transferred here my third year and then I'm here for a year and Bedard uh, calls me up one day and goes, you're not going to believe who you have to show around campus. <laughs> and I was like, you're kidding yeah. me. And I had the same situation. My coach left. He's now at Oregon. And um, Bedard right out of high school was my second option. And uh, he'll never let that down for, for um, yeah, I won't either, honestly. But, um, but then, yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, I think I remember this girl. And she was my host for, for visiting. And Best dang host ever. Yeah. And, uh, and I was like, oh my gosh, that name sounds very, very familiar. And that was, I think, like when I had this moment, like, okay, I know who this girl is. <laughs> and, um, and honestly, I, I committed, like, 12 hours after being here and yeah. then honestly the rest is history we so. clicked very well even yeah. despite bedard's efforts to try and say you know it's their two rivals meeting yeah yeah and i'm just their pet over here so <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> she's very cute <laughs> they keep me around for fun but yeah. you know yeah no, i've never been out of the country actually so i had to get my passport for this <laughs> which is kind of weird uh no. No. I've never been to Europe. She's the only one that's been to Europe. Yeah, I've been to Europe. I mean, I think the main reason that would be really cool, too, um, not like beyond representing CSU and, and America and everything, but also because uh, this is LeBron's going for, and you know, for the Olympic team, and I think it would be cool to go watch it. Just like people to go over there and watch, like, LeBron and, like, all these other really cool athletes. Like, that's another just benefit of, like, be, get, get, that would be cool to get to go is, like, you know, it's not often you get to go to Paris and go watch the Olympics and we'd have, you know, front row seats because we're there with them. Yeah. And so it'd be cool. But yeah. Maya has uh, Michaela told you about the Judge shirts yet? <laughs> oh my gosh. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey, be careful. And you're, you're wearing the Judge shirt. So. It was at Gabby's house, remember, I made you wear. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, well, she's something else. <laughs> We're, we're still working on it. <laughs> we're still, no, we're still working on yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. what's, the, what's the craziest thing she's, she's had you do since you've become uh, two stooges? Oh. <laughs> two stooges? Why am I keep getting left out here? <laughs> Jesus. There's three of we're us. So, thank you. We were the original two friends. stooges. Oh, and gosh. <laughs> I, we, oh, gosh. I, crazy things that I've made you do or that you've made you Honestly, we had another interview a couple weeks ago, and we get asked these same questions, like, we just want to know what you guys talk about. We just want to know what you guys do, this and that. Because we're very, very inappropriate people. <laughs> we'll say yeah. raunchy. Raunchy. Use the word it's raunchy. Funny, please. <laughs> <laughs> raunchy. We, we pretty much have no filters. Yeah. And that's what, what I think what I was talking about at practice. Like, 
you would think we were getting nothing done. You would think we, like, we don't even really talk about track while yeah. we're throwing. I mean, yeah. no. we're just having a good time. But are we very serious? Yes. And we love what we do, and we are very competitive people. But that's what I'm saying. We've been doing this this yeah. year for, like, eight months. So, oh, you have gosh. to keep it fun. It's also the beauty of track. Like, <laughs> you know? we get to do that. Like, no other yeah. sport can you sit there talking yeah. with your three in best between friends. eating a snack. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, having sushi, like, on the desk. All right. <laughs> like, Her yeah, sushi for breakfast. For breakfast. Breakfast. Nasty. As you, as you, <laughs> yeah. Oh, but yeah, it's it's unique in the sport that you get to do that, and I also think that's why we're we're best friends. Like, I think uh, in other sports, like, I hate I hate to bring up soccer again, but you know, there's <laughs> like I was a goalie, and on there's one goalie on the field, and so as much as I want to be best friends with the other goalies, like it does kind of come between you guys. Whereas like, you know, I literally am the second best at both events. So I, but it's it's awesome because it doesn't matter. Like. All it is is that we get to, we, it doesn't take anything away from me. It's not opportunities taken away. Like we all, it just is that we all get to get, do it together and yeah, and make it fun. It's awesome. Yeah, I don't so, really think it's about like who wins, who doesn't win, what right. place do you get? Like everybody, of course, would love to win. And uh, each one of us would love to take first every day of our life. But that isn't just how track works. Like I think the biggest takeaway that we take from the sport is the process and how we got to get whatever place we did that day or at that big meet like it took a lot and we're just thankful to even honestly podium or be there yeah. or you know i mean some people would die to be in our position so something cool that gabby's always said since like the moment i transferred here um is she said that you know if i do really well on a certain day and you do better than me. That, I mean, we still both did well, and she's always stood by that. She's always said that. And I've always felt that way, but I've never had, like, such an eloquent way of putting it. And she really does, I mean, she really does stand by that. Um, it's just cool. It, it doesn't take yeah. away anything right. from either. Like, from any one of us has an awesome day, and the um, other does better. If That's anything, awesome. like, the reason I think that, if, or at least personally, the reason that I'm good at both events is because two of my best friends are good at those events, and that way I get to focus on those and be competitive in those and learn from them and practice with them and push each other all the time. And not in, like Bedard said, not in a competitive, like butting heads way, but in a, we learn from each other, each we other. can lift each other up, call each other out, you know, when we're not doing well and like just those things, so. Yeah, I totally second that. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, what's the best Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's pretty much done it all, honestly, if you think about it. <laughs> he's tried to be a football player and track. That didn't work out. No. He told me he threw shot put in like middle school, but it never really clicked for him. And then I think it would have, but maybe, I don't know, they were probably drinking and smoking on too much on the sides or something. I don't know. But um, no, uh, I think, uh, honestly, like, this is not really going to sound good, but right after I won my NCAA title, he was like, take it all in, enjoy it, and then, you know, put it away, and, you know, we move on. Like, um, and I honestly, at first, I was like, what do you mean? Like, I have been literally dreaming about this day, and it was so such an incredible moment, and it was, but then I kind of thought about it, and I was like, you know what, like, that is kind of just how life happens. Like you win some, you lose some. And honestly, um, it's important to, to recognize like all the hard work that you have put in. But I think the biggest thing that he has taught me is like, do not let, um, you know, your trophies or, or anything that you've done make, change you as a person. And so I've tried super, super hard to be, to be successful, but to also not have an ego or to not be, you know, grateful for the, the people that have come into my life or um, the the things that I've done. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, it sounds super cliche, I guess, but uh, I guess I just moved on and I'm, I'm like ready for the next thing. And that's kind of how he's always lived. And um, yeah, 